Hey, good day, everyone. Paul Lawrence Fan here, and glad that you could be with me. Of course, this is a YouTube channel, Leadership is Influence. Glad to be with you. I'm the host of today's program and hope that you glean a lot because, of course, the focus is on leadership. I just want to share a quick story with you as it pertains to leadership. And when I had my very first leadership opportunity as a professional, I was ready for it. And the reason why I was ready for it is because I had had so many previous experiences prior to becoming a professional employee, in my case, uh, working as a military officer in the U.S. Air Force. And ultimately, that led to 12 straight years in the Pentagon and one year on Capitol Hill and the U.S. House of Representatives working for a member of Congress. So I want you to think now about what is your first or what was your first leadership experience? Have you had one? Are you about to go into one leading a project or whatever a tasking that your organization has put in place for you? But it's very important to go back and look at your history and find out what was your beginning. Could it have been as a volunteer? Perhaps uh, some people volunteer in the sanctuary in which they worship, some playing sports, others in the community, maybe working with a nonprofit, uh, feeding the homeless, and different projects and programs like that. Well, I just want you to know, in case you didn't know, that's leadership. It's leadership in the highest order. So uh, go back and take a look. And then the next thing I want you to do is to look at some of the people that you work for or you have worked for in the past. And just on observation, if you're working now, just observe your supervisor, observe the leader of the organization, the CEO or the president, and also observe your peers and see what they are doing. If someone looks like they are really good at leadership, because one day uh, you may be leading a project and you want to be able to select some people to be on your team to help you to solve some issues for your organization, for your clients. And so that's what I want to share with you right off the bat. But what I'm going to talk about today are different challenges in the workforce and something that you can maybe prepare for or at least be cognizant of it. And if you're ready, I'm ready. And the first thing, a challenge that leaders have is communication, ineffective communication. One must be able to communicate up and down the line or what we call the chain of command. You need to be able to speak to the security guard at the gate or at, at the entry of the building. You need to be able to communicate with the maintenance people. Uh, you may need to be able to communicate with contractors or subcontractors who work with your organization and definitely with the employees. But if we find ineffective communication from a leader, it means they need to rehone and reshape their communication skill sets. And I'm not just talking about talking to a person, but it also writing or email or social media, doing interviews, different things such as that podcast, uh, all manners of communication, it all comes into play. And then we also have the body language aspect because the body language can give off communications as well. And so you really want to be in alignment with that. So any form of ineffective communication can really alter what is getting done within the organization because the message that you sent out as a leader, it has to be able to trickle down to the managers and then to the employees so you can be on the same sheet of music, if you will. I don't mean singing in the choir. I mean being able to communicate with an individual that they have a clear and coherent message and they know exactly what the task is. And I used the example of we had a project in our leadership program I went through and what what the the way this process worked, the person who headed up the table, he knew the question to ask and he would ask the person to his right on and on until it reached the fifth person, the sixth person, the 10th person. And then they would have the 10th person repeat what the question was. And perhaps maybe 50% of the time, the message would have been communicated around the table clearly, but for the most time, most times it wasn't because there was a little bit of change. Maybe it was that someone didn't understand exactly what was communicated, or maybe some people forget <laughs> because people have different uh, ways of 
interpreting things. They have different ways of listening style, you know, an active listener versus someone who's just kind of doing it by, you know, by hand. They're, they're just kind of um, doing it from the standpoint of, well, okay, fine. You know, they're not really interested or focused in it. So effective, ineffective communication can really uh, stop uh, the mission from being uh, completed, uh, not getting the results that you're looking for and, and a matter of other things. Just like I'm here uh, on this video, everybody's not comfortable in front of a video. And for me, I've spent time on live television and uh, what, what is kind of humorous is that I would actually receive questions from the, the uh, manager or the person who's managing the segment for the live shoot. And uh, they would give me the questions. I would study them as much as I can in the, the day or so that I had. And once I would get to the actual interview live, they wouldn't even ask the questions that they sent me. <laughs> so again, ineffective communication can stop the whole show but it, the show must go on. And so with that being said, I'll get to the next thing that is a great challenge for leaders and that is change management. So what is change management? Change management is a company that's led by an individual and they decide that they wanna shake things up. In other words, they wanna make some adjustments to the schedule of the employees. They wanna make a change to the protocol. They wanna make a change to the project. And so with these, all of these changes, it doesn't mean that everyone is receptive to it. Now they are employed by this individual and that individual heads up the organization, but that does not mean that they really want change because change is constant. However, what is the one thing that people really don't like? You guessed it, change. They don't like to change. So uh, when, when a person uh, has a tasking and let's say that that tasking is, is that we want these uh, pilots, we want them to practice uh, this maneuver six times. And it's they're a precision a flying unit and they're out there and any mistake can cost the entire, entire uh, squadron, if you will. And if you go out there and you're not, don't know exactly what to do because of this change that's been made, Maybe it's one less rotation or adding an additional rotation in the flight path that they're taking and the protocol for it, it, that could really ruin a lot of things. So it takes consistent practice, getting the change down pat. Typically they don't get it right the first time. So it's one repetition, two repetitions on and on and on until they get it what we call perfection even though perfection doesn't exist, but it's the closest thing we can do. So maybe we would say they get it to excellence as best that they can. But change ma management is real. And it's one of the greatest challenges that leaders have. And unfortunately, everybody on the team or in the staff, they don't get it or they don't want to make that change. And ultimately over time, they will because it becomes a daily habit. So it becomes a routine and eventually it locks in and people know exactly what to do. And they eventually embrace the a change management that's taken place. And that change management could very well be something that uh, you're gonna work an extra hour each day. Are you gonna work one less hour each day? And if you have children, that means if you're picking up children from school, that may alter your entire uh, at the work uh, routine. And so it's different things such as this that uh, leaders have to make an adjustment for. And so, so far we've covered ineffective communications and change management. And then we wanna talk about employee mental health issues. And uh, I would not be surprised if every organization in the world had some mental health issues with employees. And they may not be anything that's detrimental to the organization, but it's just acknowledging that a lot of people come under stress, they come under pressure, they come under anxiety, and it's real. And so when we address mental health issues and leaders have to do this head on, if you will, it's a good thing because it gives you an opportunity to resolve it. But it can be an issue if an employee only shows up once out of a five day work week, or if they're working exorbitant hours overtime. 
uh, either one of those extremes can cause a issue. So we have to address these mental health issues. And sometimes we can go through, uh, may, some companies may actually have a behavioral health individual on staff, but if not, they may contract it out. And today, a lot of it can be done virtually. So uh, there's nothing uh, that can really uh, prevent it from a person from participating in it. And I, I just want to caution people to don't think that because a person has a mental health issue that there's something wrong with them. If a person has a mental health issue and they try to get it addressed, everything is all right with them. And they're just trying to find some answers like we all do over the course of our lives. And so when we look at mental health issues, things come into play such as empathy, uh, being conscious of others, um, really coming in and being in another person's shoes, if you will, and being able to understand that a lot of people have issues. We may have a, one of the employees and she's pregnant and she needs time off. And if she's receiving pressure from the fact, well, you won't be here for X amount of weeks or months, and that can add anxiety. Or a person who is really struggling to get their job done and they're concerned about losing that job and their source of only source of income. So there are a lot of things taking place or if someone is, is getting married, that has a certain uh, level of excitement and can kind of throw the focus off, but then someone who's getting a divorce has the opposite effect. It, it can impact them. And uh, it's just something that leaders need to be aware of. So employee mental health issues. The next uh, issue that leaders uh, run into is conflict management. Now, this is something that is really important to address, being able to resolve issues internally within the workplace. And for that matter, to extend that in the workforce itself. But conflict management does occur. Uh, everyone doesn't get along at times and there are differences and people have to be able to work out those differences. So a process or protocols have to be put in place to address the issues so the issues won't get out of hand. Uh, whether it's a white collar type employment or blue collar employment, whether it's union versus non-union, there are a lot of different issues to take into account when it comes to conflict management. And it should be written in the corporate policies in terms of how they would handle that. And if it's a union based, then there will be some policies for conflict management as well. But it is real and it happens uh, every day somewhere, even in the military. Uh, mobile oil, they had a UPS when I worked for them when I was in college, they had had different uh, uh, protocols and they have different bylaws and different uh, corporate policies that take place. And it's just something that leaders have to be aware of. And, and they have to have the ability to resolve the issues. Because if a leader adds to the conflict, nothing good is going to come out of that situation. It's kind of like you have to be independent and yet you have to be uh, mutually uh, work with individuals, two different individuals having an issue, or if it's a, a team that's having some conflicts, you have to be able to, to resolve these issues because if you don't, they will have an impact on the overall performance. And you may very well lose some of those talented uh, employees or talented manager, or you may lose the, the CEO or the leader by title themselves. So it's something that has to be addressed. It's not something to avoid and just put it off like, oh, it'll blow over. Trust me, it will not blow over. <laughs> it will be exacerbated and uh, it will get even worse. So when you nip it in the bud, it's a term that's used. If you address the issue straight on, uh, document the conversations that are taking place, and then really look for a resolution and, and, and document that resolution as well, because life is all about real. If people, real people, real issues at times. And so if you can resolve the issue and people can work together mutually, in the long run, you'll come out a lot better. And so uh, that's another a challenge that people have. And then employee development. Now, this is very important. Typically, leaders work with organizational development. They want to assign a person uh, to a different uh, course, or they're going to have a lot of um, 
meetings and bringing people in and they got to go over everything that they're trying to accomplish. But when it comes to, to employee development, uh, it's different things uh, such as maybe having them attend a leadership workshop. Maybe you see the value in bringing in someone, provide a standardized program for all the employees to include the employee, the manager, and the CEO who sits in on it. So everything will be standardized and everyone will be on the same sheet of music, if you will. And so it's very important to develop employees. If the employee needs to improve their communication skills, that's something to consider. If they need some soft skills, uh, being able to communicate with people, being able to uh, troubleshoot uh, issues that, that may be occurring, and then trying to find some different ways of improving the uh, conditions in the workplace. Uh, it could be that someone uh, volunteers and rotates like we used to do in, in one of the organizations, and they may bring in uh, coffee for people. So people may very well decide, hey, we're going to go to Starbucks or the nearest coffee place, bring in coffee, or we could and have a coffee time, coffee hour. They may bring in some donuts or some bagels. And so, or they may just go to breakfast. So you, you're gonna develop people, you're gonna talk talk about different ways to help them, if, if it's even a writing skills or it could be technical issue where you teach people how to be better as a handling the computers now. You know, they have the different uh, applications of chat, GPT, AI, all sorts of things, and some of that employee development could very well go into that, that um, area in terms of helping that development. And then also a very important aspect is showing the employees and everyone on the staff how to build bridges with their clients and their prospects. Now, that's always a very good one because uh, typically uh, you really don't have that. Some companies it's already built in, but but new company or a emerging company, companies have been bought out and now they're merging, they still have to look at the clientele from a different perspective. So we have to look at different ways in, in terms of uh, helping leaders to better understand employee development. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is uh, understanding employee expectations. And in particular, I wanna talk about the Generation Z workforce and, and employees because uh, they approach things a lot differently. They, of course, they are the audience of employees or managers that grew up with computer, with technology. And so they typically operate from that perspective. Uh, I heard an example from uh, HR, one of the HR experts, and uh, she had attended a conference and she stated that uh, there, there was a calendar or schedule, uh, the Google calendar schedule that most of the employees use. But Generation Z decided, well, you know, I don't really want to sit in front of a computer. I want to do it directly off of my phone, my cell phone, my, uh, smartphone. And so they took it upon themselves to go on and make that change without the management knowing about it. <laughs> it was more efficient for them. But uh, I guess for the managers, uh, they would ask them, hey, pull up your screen there. Let's take a look at the calendar. You missed the meeting. And they say, oh, well, uh, I didn't have it on, on my computer. And they said, that's because you're, you're on an individual computer or calendar. You're not on the, the corporate calendar. And that's just one example. But they approach work from a different perspective and primarily because they, they're not going to wait around for people to tell them what to do. They're going to actually do it. And they're going to use technology to help them in that process. So this is definitely something to consider uh, moving forward. And they just simply approach things a little bit different. And how do I know this? You want to know how I know this? Because I have two children who are Generation Z. <laughs> Shocked about that, aren't you? But I do, and they do approach things a lot differently. I guess compared to my generation, uh, I would be considered uh, a dinosaur. <laughs> but a good, nice dinosaur, if you will. But uh, seriously, uh, it's something that leaders have to look at is that the Generation Z employees, they approach things differently. So you can't, uh, you have to work with them a little differently in terms of communicating with them, which typically, even if you're in a cubicle, they're going to text you and instead of getting up to walk to your office or to your desk to talk to you. That's just the way they approach things because that's the way they've always done it. And so it's something to consider. So let me go over really quick and, and why I'm, I'm talking about this 
right now, this topic is the uh, leadership challenges in the workforce. And I'll go over them as a synopsis in terms of what I discussed. And as you listen to this video again, and, and recommend it to your colleagues, your friends, your family, because all, we're all leaders and we, ne we need to be apprised of everything. But number one is ineffective communication could cause a breakdown. Uh, that's a great challenge for leaders. Change management, of course, because a lot of people don't like to change, but if the change is in place, at some point, you're going to have to embrace it. But it's something to consider. And then employee mental health issues. If nothing else, uh, what the pandemic taught us was there's more than one way to get the job done. A lot of it was done virtually. Nowadays, it's done from a hybrid perspective, both virtually and in office and in person. And that's something to consider. And then when we look at the mental health aspect, people are still recovering from that pandemic. Uh, there, people lost loved ones like I did. You lost friends, high school, college, and colleagues you work with. And so there's still a lot going on. And of course, in that mental health aspect, if a corporation doesn't have an in-house uh, uh, representative, then they can always contract that out or have it as a part of some of the benefits that benefit package that they can go and seek some counseling to, to assist them, which is perfectly a healthy thing to do. And then we want to look at conflict management. You know, this is one of the great challenges for uh, leaders, uh, especially those who are new to this. And you need to be able to resolve conflicts, uh, keep, make sure things are not personal, but they're more professional. And someone is really seeking a way to, to build a better mousetrap, if you will, there's nothing wrong with that, but when people make uh, personal uh, decisions uh, on someone else or make things personal, that's when things get out of hand. So you have to address these things uh, from the very start and, and make sure you document them because you need to be able, in case this happens again, you need to be able to have a track record of what happened. And then we wanna look at employee development. We need to always develop employees. It's a lot different than organizational development. But when it comes to employee development, you always want to help people to, to refine their technical skills, communication skills, writing skills, social media skills, interviewing, uh, how to get along with others. You want to be able to work with prospective customers and current customers as well. So uh, it's something that's very important and uh, is all about that employee development, being able to open up roads and opportunities that otherwise would not be there. And last, about understanding employees' expectations. In general, Z, uh, employees' their expectations are a lot different than someone who is a baby boomer, millennial, or, or, or any other type of um, generation that's out there. And they are talented, they're very gifted, and you just have to work with them a little bit different because they have technology and uh, they can really do a lot of great things and they are the future. They're not only now, but they're also the future in terms of where the workforce and the workplace is going. So uh, this episode, I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know, send me an email at info at paulvanspeaks.com. That's I-N-F-O, the at symbol, P-A-U-L-V-A-N-N-S-P-A-K-S.com. And also take a look at my speaking uh, opportunities uh, at www.paullawrencevan.com. And if you go there, you'll be able to see some of the speeches that I deliver. You'll also be able to look at some testimonials from some people that I have uh, delivered programs for. And uh, just, a, um, just a breadth of information to help you to better understand what I'm trying to achieve and what I'm trying to achieve with these YouTube channel videos is to enlighten people to the fact that everyone is a leader. You want me to explain why? Because everyone has a life to lead. And secondly, you do not have to have the title of leader to lead. You're leading directly from the position that you are as an employee or a manager. And over time, you build up and you become a better leader as well as a leader of influence. My time is up and I thank you for yours. Again, my name is Paul Lawrence Van, and I look forward to hearing from you and always looks forward to, and I'll see you on the other side when I have another video coming your way. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll talk to you later.